Meave now reached Willowhane, a settlement she knew well, for it lay near Waldenrad, where in peacetime she would go to escape her queenly duties and enjoy the thrill of a hunt. Pheasant, grouse, and partridge in abundance. You will see, said Meave in muted excitement, pivoting in her saddle to face Gascon. Alas, it appeared the war had ravaged even these woods, where life had stirred and grown tall before, only resinous trunks remained. And the village itself had lost its quaint allure, surrounded now by a double stockade, a golden sun fluttering above it. Bastards couldn't even let the damn trees be. Gascon seethed. A dismal scene. Her once cherished wood, and it weighed heavily on the Queen's spirits. Waldenrad had been a place removed, where she could rest and forget the weight of her crown. Raynard's voice roused me from her sad reverie. An elf guardian garrison holds the village, he said. We ought to drive them out. Avoid any surprise later from the rear. Give the order to attack, but none is to play the hero. We shall breach or topple the stockade together. Senseless to perish so close to home. Raynard nodded. Moments later, the Lyrians rushed forth and attacked.
This could hurt. Hey, hey, don't toss that. It's perfectly usable. Groto dum anime est, spes est. My description, a bit of bloodletting. Rivia is ours! Ours! When the battle dust had settled, Neve instructed her soldiers to gather Willowhane's inhabitants. Upon spotting their armed liberators, the common folk cowered in terror. No longer need you fear. The queen shouted. No longer must you worry about homes and loved ones. The war's nearly done. Of a sudden, a villager dropped to his knees and raised his hands to the heavens in supplication. Drake! Guide my queen! Meave broke off oddly, baffled by the man's outburst. And then it dawned on her. The Rivians of Willowhane had been driven away. Taking their place, Nilfgaardian settlers brought in to transform the near subsistence plots of local peasants into great estates producing for the Empire. Reynard managed to grasp the essence of the Nilfgaardian peasants' frantic pleas. They wish to stay. They've come to love the land. They pledge to renounce their emperor, swear allegiance to you as their rightful ruler. They... Meave had stopped listening. She turned to survey the hamlet. The walls of the huts, freshly whitewashed, tools neatly arranged, flower beds well tended. A young girl of six or seven summers peered out from her hiding place in a sunflower patch. Your Majesty? Asked Reynard, having noted that Meave's mind had wandered. What are your orders? What shall we do?
Tell them. Actually, no. I shall tell them myself. Meave stood on a bench, drew, then brandished her sword, and yelled at the top of her lungs. Out. Go. Be gone. This is our land. Our country. Understand? Without understanding a single word, the settlers easily deciphered the Queen's sentiment. They hastily gathered their chattels and fled. Meave sheathed her sword and resumed the march. And Willowhane, once vibrant, now stood quiet and lifeless, save for the wind howling through it. Meave spied the outline of Malabon Castle on the horizon and turned dour. True, no golden suns waved atop its towers, yet that did not mean those within supported her. Malabon belonged to House Obert, long in conflict with Meave's own, and with Meave herself. Behind their ramparts, do you see them, Reynard? Asked Meave, shaking her head. Countless ballistae, collecting dust, while war rages all around. Perhaps the Oberts will lend us aid, Reynard replied. True, you've been at odds with them in the past, but perhaps now, faced with a common foe. <laughs> a common foe? Snorted the Queen. You mean Nilfgaard, to whom they opened their gates? Caldwell, whom they supported? But they were convinced the Empire would win this war, and resistance, pointless. Yet you have shown all the North the Blacklads can be defeated. So perhaps they shall forget old wrongs. The things I do for the good of my realm. Meave sighed. So be it. Reynard, send a runner to the castle. Tell the Oberts their queen seeks a word. Moments later, the castle's heavy iron gate creaked open. Meave rode into the cobblestone courtyard where Margravine Greta, head of the house, greeted her. Although, greeted is perhaps not the right word. For Lady Greta granted her only a barely perceptible nod. What can I help you with, Meave? The war, my dear. The one being fought outside the walls of your castle. Greta smiled to herself, then intertwined her brittle, ring-covered fingers. I'm afraid that's impossible. It is a vassal's sacred duty to serve her liege, and... And my liege is King Willem. Greta calmly retorted. Against whom you have raised arms. Willem is a usurper. He unlawfully stripped me of my crown. The Council of Peers deprived you of your crown, Greta said, pursing her eyes into thin slits. Fearing you would drag this realm into a senseless war. A fear which, it is now abundantly clear, 
was well founded. I have returned home a victor. I defeated the North Guardians in Angren due to a stroke of good luck. You think defeating Caldwell means you can defeat the Emperor as well? Madness, my dear Meave. And my men will not die for madness. Leave my home. Be gone from my lands. I shall go, the Queen said, and I shall take your war machines with me. Did I not express myself clearly? I have refused you any aid. And I have stopped asking, Meave said, drawing her weapon. Soldiers, attack! Seeing that a battle was imminent, Greta Obert took refuge in the keep. The Margarine soldiers stood ready to defend her life to the very end. You and Epdahi, you were no different. My spirit's willing and how the... These damn boots are killing me. Abolish to your command. A reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Oh. I'm a one. Is a waste of time for one like me. The chase is on!
Every rib's a thief. For Lydia! Congratulations, you've defeated an old woman. Shocked by this sudden attack, the Oberts never stood a chance of resisting Meave. Realizing their inevitable defeat, Margravine Greta tried to escape, but her horse, frightened by the tumult of battle, tossed her from the saddle and bolted. Meave left Malabon Castle, strengthened by the Oberts' war machines, but in dour spirits. She understood that even if she won the war and chased the Nilfgaardians behind the Aruga, she would still have enemies left on her land. Let me tell you of Ravencluft, a quarry Meave passed by. A quarry with a dark history. For years earlier, its wall had collapsed, burying dozens alive. Scholars summoned from Oxenfurt were unanimous in their findings. The rock was fragile, further digging would likely cause slides. Meave had heeded the scholars' advice and closed the quarry by royal decree. Yet now, as she neared it, Meave could hear the even tap of pickaxes. She dispatched scouts to investigate. They returned promptly, their faces sullen, their cloaks blanched with a fine limestone dust. Quarry's open and you, Your Grace. Nilf Guardians. They've got folk in the pit working it. They appear to be from the surrounding villages. Interesting. Their engineers have found a way to render it safe, secure the walls. I'd say that's right unlikely, Majesty. Judging by the fresh graves we saw. The Queen then turned to Reynard, as ever at her side. Reynard, what do you advise? As a soldier, my Queen, I'd advise against any kind of assault. The terrain's hard, unsuitable for a fight, and we've little to gain from a victory. 
as a man, however. Yes. To leave our folk in chains, in that death trap. It wouldn't be right. If I were to calculate in heart and mind, keep note of gains and losses... Began Meave. I'd bend the knee to the Imperials, just as Villain did. But bloody arithmetic won't dictate my course. For I do what's just. I do what's right. Follow me! Her troops followed without hesitation. Swords in hand, their hearts afire. Those Horsons, forcing my own subjects to fight us. You mad? Don't shake that! Your Grace, if we begin killing the Overseers, the laborers will turn against them. Thing about slings, they hide well. The overseers are dead, Your Grace. The Lyrians handily dispatched the Nilfgaardian overseers, more trained in the ways of the whip than the sword. Those who survived now found themselves shackled in the very chains they'd forced the peasants to wear. Peasants. Oh. Unfortunate souls. The cruel labor in the quarry had taken its toll. They stood before the queen, shrunken to skin and bone, clothed in tattered rags, their eyes reddened by dust. But in those eyes burned a brilliant fire. Your Grace, them black clads treated us like dogs, stripped us of dignity. So we beg you, give us arms. Let us march neath your banner. Tis a chance at revenge we seek, we want! Reynard leaned towards Meave and spoke in a scarcely audible whisper. Majesty, they've knelt. Not boots, not even foot wraps. To equip the lot, train them, would cost a small fortune. Tis true, they've knelt to their names, said the Queen. Have few skills to offer and little strength. But to look in their eyes is to know they'll never flee, never throw down their arms. Such recruits are worth coin in any amount. Emaciated, downtrodden, the peasants met the Queen's offer with gratitude. They relished the thought of facing their tormentors in a fight.
Mee's force reached Cavaldon, a small, rundown town. The Blackclads, they've a strong garrison in place, proclaimed her scouts upon returning from a foray. And they stand prepared for a siege. Their stores overflow, and we see ballistas, scorpions. Cavaldon can be taken, began Reynard hesitantly, but not without losses. Considerable losses. A retreat? Is that what you advise? I fear the soldiers wouldn't take to such a course. They're eager, Your Grace. They've a fire in them. Order a retreat and you could devastate morale. Our losses may be heavy, said me, drawing her sword. But I'll make certain the vile invader suffers even more. Order the troops to prepare. We will attack. Soon after, the Lyrians moved on Cavaldon, war drums rumbling in step to their march. Upon the walls, the Nilfgaardians stood poised to defend. Kazel! Discipline. 
That is what you folk lack. Thing about slings, they are well. As today the day? Something from nothing, it's exactly what I do. Stop your yapping and start digging. Discipline, that is what you folk lack. We did it, Your Grace. The city is ours. 
The Nilfgaardians had indeed prepared well, with grapples to repel hook ladders from the walls and long spears to rain down upon attackers far below. Meave managed on the fourth attempt to breach the defenses, but did so scrambling over the corpses of her own men. The Queen was in the field tent when Reynard arrived with surprising news. To be heard over the groans of the wounded, he had to raise his voice. Your Grace, a delegation of townsfolk. They seek an audience urgently. Dozens of burghers stood before the tent. Between them and the Queen, a man knelt in shackles. His face was bloodied as if he'd endured a vicious beating just moments before. Who's this? Our blacksmith, Todor! Snarled a priestess in a frayed robe. He betrayed you, your grace. Soon after the Nilfgaardians arrived, within hours in truth, he offered his labor and strength. They didn't even need to ask. Forged arms and armor for them, all for imperial gold. <laughs> Meave gripped the beaten man's beard, tugged upwards, and looked him in the eyes. Did you forge the hooks and the tips for those spears? I... I, I did, Your Grace. It was fine work, growled the Queen. Damned fine. So in mercy, my lady, cried a withered old man in a flower-spattered apron. When a black-clad bastard captured my son, they were eager to hang him. Todor spoke for him, saved his life. He helped me too, hollered a woman in the crowd. I were hungry. He shared what little he had. The townsfolk began shouting over one another. Some told of the blacksmith's noble deeds. Others labeled him a traitor deserving of a cruel and violent end. Meave turned back towards the field hospital, pondering the case, then spotted her soldiers' corpses laid out in rows. Had it not been for Todor, there might not have been so many. Twenty soldiers died today, resting Cavaldon from Nilfgaard's grip, said Meave, her tone cold and unforgiving. Twas your iron that felled them. Twill be your blood that pays the debt. Five lashes for each of the fallen. Todor's torturers were several, as no one man's arm could complete one hundred blows. Amazingly, Todor survived the ordeal, but his body had been broken. He'd never put hammer to anvil again, and spent the rest of his days a beggar.